sponsored by Dennis J. Courtney, MD, director of the Courtney Medical Group, located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002 for Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AM Impact on Your Health. AM Impact on Your Health for every day, our goal, to have you learn at least one thing to help you live better and longer. AM Impact on Your Health, of course, heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. And impact on your health. For each day, you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and where we do encourage you to call in to join in. Today, well, today uh, things have cooled down out there, have they not? And when we left you on Friday, it was pretty hot. Uh, some rain came through. I guess some more is coming through today, but uh, uh, we probably need some of that rain, so that's fine. Here today, we'll be talking about a number of things. One thing for sure. Everything you need to know about vitamin C. We're always talking about it peripherally. I'm going to attack this uh, from my perspective. I discuss this an awful lot in my practice, and uh, and patients who come to see me end up getting this vitamin D lecture, which I'm going to give to you today as a little bit of a bonus and uh, and um, and a prize, I think. And so uh, everything you need to know about vitamin C is what we're going to be able to discuss. We'll do so right after that first break. You may want to either punch this up on your archive list or get pencil and paper ready. Of course, you too could ask a question any time at all during this show. The number to do so is 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262. Get a couple things out of the way. Number one, uh, enjoyed last week bringing to you the definitive word on uh, the sugar and fructose connection. Um, you'll find that the show from last Wednesday is probably the best one to repeat with respect to uh, all the salient points that we brought up. So uh, if you want to uh, go back and listen to shows, that's the one certainly to do it with. Uh, also to the um, uh, oh, got uh, the issue of our guests. We've got up-and-coming guests. We've got one on Wednesday, uh, and you asked for it, so you did get it. We finally did get a hold of John Michael. Now, uh, his name came up with respect to one of our callers who uh, suggested we take another look at the Love Street Connection. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, Love Street Connection is the name of the company. Uh, Love Street is the name of the company. I threw the connection part in there. But the uh, Love Street is a chocolate manufacturing company making organic chocolate. And we first met John Michael a number of years ago. I'm going to say two years ago now. Um, Spoke to him briefly on the phone. A lot's happening with John Michael. Uh, it involves Pittsburgh. It involves uh, actually uh, John Michael's company going big. And uh, we'll talk about how it uh, got started, how it is that uh, it produces what it does, and uh, this new potential for it finally going big, uh, which is on the drawing board that uh, John is itching to get it you. This will happen on Wednesday morning. You don't want to miss the show for Wednesday when we have the Love Street Connection, uh, chocolate that is, uh, through its uh, envisioner, its, its uh, visionary, and its owner, John Michael, be with us on Wednesday morning. That is, I promised you, and I was diligent about it, I said I was going to get uh, James Roberts on this show, and uh, I got through all the, uh, the girls wearing the football pads on the phones there out in uh, Toledo, Ohio, and I finally did connect with Debbie. Debbie's his right-hand nurse, and uh, we had to settle on. The man is so busy. We found a slot uh, and availability at uh, the 8 o'clock hour on August 25th. So uh, we're greater than a month away, but nonetheless, I said, rather than disturbing uh, his schedule, just leave it the way it is. You found me an opening. I'll take the opening. Pittsburgh will take the opening. So you get ready for Dr. Jimmy Roberts to be with us. Uh, uh, well, I guess 
in the going back to school segment of the show because by the time August 25th comes around, that's exactly what's going to be happening here in the Pittsburgh area. Uh, other things. Uh, well, uh, of course, a lot on thyroid happened last month. I should just say that rather than uh, being cynical about it, what you need to know with respect to uh, the thyroid issues, and if you're feeling bad, uh, that certainly would be one. I'm not going to go through all 20 symptoms, but I'll tell you what. Let's reduce it to the one objective way that you out there can determine if you have thyroid issues, whether, and I think this was the point I tried to make when I talked about uh, uh, the four ways, uh, how do they call them, the, the title, the, the four phrases uh, that are, are signs that you more than likely have a thyroid issue. And we're talking about, you know, well, I'm on Synthroid or my doctor got my, my blood test. Hey, let's just say the, the, the safest way for you to know whether you have thyroid issues that require treatment, and I say that they're going to require treatment, is just check your basal body temperature. Unfortunately, you won't be able to do it with a mercury shakedown thermometer, or if you can, uh, I won't tell because they're even illegal. You're not allowed to own them anymore. Uh, but there is a, a specific kind of alcohol shakedown thermometer that uh, Dr. Kerry was talking about. Anyway, we now know that the temperatures that you have to achieve are somewhere between 97.8 and 98.2. Just take the basal body temperature. And no matter what treatment approach you are involved with, you'll be able to determine its success or its failure by virtue of the fact that as you achieved basal body temperatures to 97.8 or 98.2. If you have not, then you must seriously question the approach that you have been taking uh, to correct your thyroid issues because as I've had to co finally come to grips with, they, not, they are not working and there has to be a better way. And of course, there is a better way. We talked about it with Dr. Roy and we certainly are doing this here in our office with a whole range of patients who are real happy to see that we've turned the, the, turned the page, so to speak, on this issue. So you check your basal body temperature. Uh, if you're premenopausal, gals, you're going to need a few uh, of these temperatures uh, sort of right at the beginning of the cycle because that for sure is a period of time when uh, ovulation is not occurring. You know, there's a funny little thing that happens with uh, basal body temperatures when it comes to uh, the menstruating female because at or about the time of ovulation, around day 12, there is a spike in temperature. And this would give an erroneous reading uh, that uh, your basal body temperature is actually higher than it really is. Uh, by the way, the whole base, uh, basis of uh, infertil couples who are battling with infertility is based around this issue that at ovulation, the basal body temperature spikes. And that's usually when the, the wife dutifully calls the husband home for lunch break, if you know what I mean. Anyway, uh, you need to get those basal body temperatures at a time when ovulation isn't in question. That's why right at the beginning of the menstrual cycle is more than likely the better time to do it. But you need to be at 97.8 or 98.2. And what you're going to find out, I'm afraid, is that you're nowhere near. 97.8 or 98.2. And I mean, if you're going to say, well, I'm at 97.6 or 97.7, I'm willing to give it to you. But uh, the temperatures that I see and the temperatures that are brought in to me, I'd say, well, look, I, I took you up on your request for basal body temperatures. They're in the 90, very low 97s and 96s. And honest to goodness, even sometimes 95, I really almost question whether they were accurately taken, but I haven't had enough patients to know that that's how low they can actually get. And obviously, thyroid is strictly on top, of the, on, on top of the plate in terms of what has to be dealt with. So what's your basal body temperature? Hey, are you, uh, are you uh, in, in, uh, ingenious enough and uh, inquisitive enough, better term, inquisitive enough to find out? Uh, so that you can determine whether or not you actually need treatment. So that's the thyroid issue. We got that one out of the way. Uh, uh, just a little uh, a plea for those out there still who are listening to me through the stream up component here. 
uh, where you're far away from Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm trying to find out if we're coming across loud and clear. I think we got that cleared up. One final plea. I probably won't mention it again, uh, but if there if there are troubles out there, especially when we have guests, uh, with respect to the fall off of the volume, when the guest is speaking, as opposed to when I'm speaking, uh, please. Email me, let me know. You've done a good job up to now. I think the techie finally did get that particular issue taken care of. Uh, one article I want to bring to your attention, uh, prompted by, as who else, Joe. Joe said it would. Talk about Joe Mercola. Anyway, an article that caught my eye. I'm bringing it to you because uh, the implications of this are, rel are really uh, uh, enormous, at least I feel. Uh, there's a little blurb that occurred in a uh, publication called the Sunday Times. This is back on June 30th, 2010, not too far away, just a couple of weeks ago. In it, uh, the byline was, girls are now reaching puberty at the age of nine. And uh, it certainly caught my eye. I'm very familiar with how I think I, I see the ages of, of puberty dropping. I have of nieces in my family that um, 10 years ago I felt uh, this was something that uh, was an issue that had to be discussed. And we've raised it here on the show a number of times. Well, uh, with this new study, and it's out of Denmark, uh, they noted that, uh, uh, that the uh, age where uh, puberty is now beginning in the study of over 1,000 girls uh, in Denmark. And this is a study done in 2006. Why it takes four years for the information to finally get to us, well, I can't answer that, but nonetheless, uh, it showed that the average uh, breast development started in these girls, these thousand girls, at about the age of nine years and ten months. And uh, that this is an entire year earlier in what a similar study revealed back in 1991. And I think that's what the theme of this precocious puberty issue is all about. How low are these numbers going to get? Uh, when you go back in the history, you find out in the 19th, in the 19th century, talking about the 1800s, folks, uh, puberty occurred in girls at about age 15, and occurred in boys in about age 17. And boy, how I think it's safe to say that those numbers have dropped. Of course, the term precocious puberty is the medical term to describe early onset of puberty. And there's a definition for it. They say that precocious puberty in girls is the development of breast, the uh, presence of armpit or pubic hair, or the menarche. Uh, before the age of eight. That's precocious puberty. That's actually a pathological situation, folks, and needs to be explored endocrinologically. And so what's happening here is, as I see it, is what is being found just in general research, as, as was the case in the Denmark study of 1,000 girls, uh, we're, and they're at nine years and 10 months, uh, with the development of, uh, of early onset uh, puberty, uh, the term precocious puberty, a pathological state, is uh, pretty much getting to be around the corner, wouldn't you say? By the way, in the case of males, uh, precocious puberty, just to round out that discussion, uh, is uh, medically defined as the uh, presence of enlarged testicles or penis size, uh, presence of armpit or pubic hair, as well as coarse facial hair before the age of nine. Okay, that's also a pathological condition. Now this gets down to a discussion of what's the cause. Uh, the uh, Denmark study wanted to claim that the cause of this is more than likely due to obesity, and that's there is a link between obesity and things like insulin resistance increased ability to convert hormones into estrogen, and the increased ability to store environmental toxins. That all happens in obesity, none of which was mentioned in the article at all. But here's the point, and I always do have a point, and they're not. Here's the point that finally I think needs to be made, and that is this is a Danish study. And in Europe, uh, the chemicals used in livestock 
is really they're not permitted, not allowed. Uh, only here in this country do we allow. In fact, the FDA uh, currently allows the following six hormones to be used in the uh, in food production. Now listen to these six, and these are allowed. Allowed here in this country, and not not allowed in Europe and uh, many other parts of the world. Completely banned, but not here. And so here they come. Number one, estradiol. It's allowed. Progesterone. It's allowed. Testosterone. It's allowed. Now, of course, the amounts I don't have in front of me, but the fact that it's allowed and allowed to be used in uh, livestock uh, uh, feed, uh, or no, in actually injection of livestock, and particularly cattle and sheep, but not poultry or pigs, so that's at least a point if you're really something there. Then there are these synthetic ones called Xeranol, Trenbolone, and Melangestrol, uh, all synthetic growth promoters. These are six hormones that are allowed in our uh, livestock, particularly cattle. And so my question is, and I'll end this with a question and we'll take a break. Uh, in a Danish study of 1,000 girls where um, uh, obesity is being considered uh, to describe why they're having early onset of puberty, what does this say for our country and the onset of uh, puberty uh, where we haven't had these studies really done, um, where we are allowed to use in our feeds uh, uh, for cattle as well as injecting cattle six hormones that aren't even allowed any other place but here. And the one final thing I wanted to end with was, I lost it. I'll find it. We'll take a break. We'll come back. And I'll find that point and bring it to you, which really uh, is the final crescendo moment in this particular topic. Uh, give you a second. Let's take a break. Be back to talk about it some more. Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. Dr. Courtney? Yes. Danville's on the line. Uh, okay, thank you. I won't be with you for him. All right. Okay, hold on. It just doesn't quite produce the results that you were looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, or we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Want to help your family eat healthier? Instead of learning to disguise tofu in wondrous ways, how about some real nutritional power? If your family has the typical American palate for fries, pizza, and burgers, giving your family the blessing of good nutrition is a struggle. Fruit of the Spirit is the answer for your family's nutritional needs. Fruit of the Spirit is an all-natural, whole fruit puree made from fresh fruits native to the Holy Land with alkalizing minerals. Fruit of the Spirit was five years in the formulation, the work of a team of top nutritional experts with independent science to confirm its antioxidant power. One ounce a day provides the equivalent of five servings of fruits and minerals. Fruit of the Spirit is convenient, affordable, and delicious. Even your picky family will sing the praises of Fruit of the Spirit. Give your loved ones the blessing of good nutrition. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit of the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. That's one 800 442-3793. Call them now. 1-800-442-3793. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to A&M Impact on Your Health here on this Monday morning version of the show. 
Uh, we're having I don't know, a little bit of an issue on uh, early and precocious puberty, talking about the, the role that hormones may play in this. One that finally ended with a point I had lost, I couldn't find it, finally found it, and that is there is a study, a study showing that, uh, this is a study out of Brighton University, found that 49% of girls who ate meat 12 times a week at the age of 7 had reached puberty by the age of 12 and a half, compared with 35% of those girls who ate meat four times a week who finally reached puberty at 12 and a half. And that's my American contribution to all this uh, stuff we're talking about in, uh, in Denmark. What do they do over in Denmark? I'm always interested about that stuff. Why do you get these weird studies from Denmark? Anyway, salient point is uh, what we have in our foods here. Meantime, guess who dialed us up? Come on in, Danville. Is that you? Danville, hello. Hey, what's up, Doc? How are Danville, you? Danville, how are we coming through down there in Virginia, Danville? You need to move to your left. You oh, yeah. From the camera. <laughs> I was, I was, I had my nose in the computer. Now I can come back there. Oh, okay. There I am. Okay. How are we coming through down there? All right, loud and clear. Yeah, there you go. I can see you now. I can see you now. Okay, very good. I'm just checking to make sure we're streaming up all right. Uh, what's oh. on your mind, Danville, besides that? Anything else at all? Oh, everything, uh, everything's hunky-dunky. My neck is uh, hurting, but I'm going to go try another product. I, one thing I was curious, another product that I saw at CVS, they said it's a chondroitin... Uh, uh, glucosamine. It's glucosamine. This will raise your blood pressure. How the heck is that? Um, the sulfur? I don't Oh, it's claiming that it raised your blood pressure, huh? No, not me. I didn't oh. say that. No, it oh. says it on the package. It says it on the uh, the thing. It, and it has the MSM. What was the one thing we discussed? Of the sulfur. sulfur the sulfur. Or? Yeah, sulfur donated MSM groups. Um, I don't think I can I have an answer for you for why there is an elevation in blood pressure. Uh, and the fact they're putting it on the label means it's pretty substantial. That's rather strange. I wouldn't yeah. think that chondroitin, which is basically ground up. Chicken bones. Well, chicken cartilage, I think, Bones, whatever it is. Cartilage, you name it. Yeah, uh, I, I don't. Yeah, as long as it's not from the Gulf with the benzene on it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Danville. Hey, Danville, thanks for checking in. All righty, thanks. All right. All right. I always appreciate hearing from Danville. I hope you do too. Folks, here we are. Anything on your mind? Uh, you can give us a call four one two eight two five six two six two. I promise you that uh, we we're going to talk a little bit about vitamin C. I, I end up. Uh, because vitamin C is such a great uh, supplement for a whole bunch of reasons. It comes up uh, almost uh, in every single patient that I see who comes across me because I really feel it's my obligation to educate them to make them the better consumer on making sure that vitamin C that they're taking accomplishes the goals and objectives that they want to achieve. And I just don't think, and I don't want everybody to get mad at me. Now, my colleagues out there, a number of years ago, uh, boy, they got angry at me. And they make it angry at me today, but uh, it's been a long time now since we've had a discussion about vitamin C and, uh, and uh, the salient points that a consumer really does need to have and keep in mind when purchasing, when determining what dosages and the like. So um, let's see where this leads us today. Uh, if during this discussion you want to call in to make a comment yourself, and any of my colleagues are out there who are fixing to get mad at me again because of some of the things I'm going to say, you can call me too. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, but this issue of vitamin C is just much too important not to get uh, some, some of its own time, so to speak. Of course, vitamin C uh, is what, uh, is what uh, we have used for the longest time for uh, its anti oxidant properties. Now these terms of oxidant, antioxidant, as I try to get across to my patients, these are powerful words. They have a major impact behind them. We tend to throw them out like they're uh, nickel words, you know, I mean antioxidant and oxidant. Uh, when they're used, I believe that the people who are using them don't really appreciate the, the full force behind the term that they're actually using. These aren't nickel words. These are these aren't even quarter or half. The, these are silver dollar words that play a role in uh, physiological, biological, with their biological activity in the body. 
that produce tremendously beneficial effects when all of the vitamin C issues are taken into account. Because um, if you have the need for an antioxidant, then you must have a process of oxidation going on all the time, and you sure do. You heard the term free radical generation, free radical quenching, free radical. The term free radical is the one I guess we need to concentrate on just a bit because these free radicals, these are compounds that are less uh, a, a, pro, a electron and consequently carry a charge. And by carrying that charge, they produce some terrible effects at the level of the cell membrane and cause damage to it. Anything you can do to prevent this free radical damage, which is an oxidation process, there comes the words, oxidation. Anytime you can prevent, diminish, reverse oxidation from occurring in this human body of yours, you have a bonus. You have a plus. You have an overall positive uh, with respect to uh, helping you in improve, improving your current health status and as a consequence to that, uh, improving your overall health status and longevity. So there's where vitamin C comes in. Its antioxidant properties can, and I mean can completely, cancel out all oxidation damage done by free radicals. Now, the conversation I have with my patients, might as well be having that conversation with you right now, the issue that usually brings uh, the vitamin C story to the table in the office here is uh, talking about cardiovascular damage, cardiovascular risk. You remember, we have those, now there are nine, nine blood tests that we have to go over. We, we um, uh, end up uh, getting blood work where those nine particular tests are drawn, and so much of them are, an, in, uh, are a reflection of physiological process, pathological processes that are going on where oxidation is responsible for the bad effect, for the bad result, for the bad outcome. Uh, and in particular, a uh, discussion usually ensues in the office here when we're talking about the uh, lipid profile. And of course, the lipid profile has things like four big parameters, remember, cholesterol, triglyceride, LDL and HDL. Now, we're going to about three of those for the moment. Let's just concentrate on the LDL component, your low-density lipoproteins, been known as the bad cholesterol. And the reason why it's bad is because it can cause harm to the cell membrane when it becomes oxidized. Regular old LDL will not hurt you. It is only after it becomes oxidized that it, cause damage, it causes damage to the cell membrane. And consequently, uh, with damage to the cell membrane, calcium can enter the cell. And once calcium enters that cell, that cell will die. To prevent that process completely, we usually get into a discussion of uh, using an antioxidant in the form of vitamin C to accomplish that goal. We also have to have that same discussion for the same reason with things like lipoprotein little a. Hey, that's one of the nine tests, too. How about this newest test, small particle LDL? I'm not going to get into so much of the, of the labs, per se, just, just to say that these three components that commonly come up in our discussion with patients are absolutely have the potential to cause oxidation, injury, and damage, and that that kind of damage can be completely prevented by taking vitamin C, which is a very, very potent antioxidant. Now, one other thing you may not appreciate, but you won't have to go back too far in time to remember a guy by the name of Linus Paul, Nobel Prize winner, huh? And he's the one that made the connection between using vitamin C to prevent the common cold. And as you all know, the common cold is caused by a virus. Um, 
little appreciated is the fact that vitamin C has the ability to actually completely kill viruses. I'm going to talk in a moment about how that happens, but nonetheless, vitamin C gained its prominence in the 1990s because of Linus falling, and it's certainly something that we use around here each and every day with respect to its antimicrobial, in particular antiviral. It does not have, vitamin C has no antibacterial property at all. It's an antimicrobial, all right, but only if the microbe happens to be a virus. If it's a bacteria, there have to be other substances used. Vitamin C won't touch it, but it certainly will touch and absolutely render uh, completely innocuous because it will kill viruses in the right amount, in the right type. And that's what we really need to get to, this, to a discussion at, with respect to its, anti, its antioxidant property as well as its antiviral property. You are left with a choice of selecting the vitamin C for you. That vitamin C, usually that you take, an oral form of vitamin C, has to have a couple of things kept in mind before you decide on the type and dose of that vitamin C. The first is, here come the phone calls. Here come, here come my colleagues. They're going to get angry at me again. Uh, but i got to really reveal it once again. It's been a while. The uh, vitamin C that you take, you have to be aware of, is 99.9% .9 of the time derived from corn. I know that sounds a, a little, just a little tough to take. What do you mean corn? Well, yes, it comes, it is obtained from corn. Hey, it, that's no surprise. Um, Vitamin C is found as a nutrient in all forms, uh, a whole bunch of forms, not all forms, but a whole bunch of forms of, of plant sources. Corn just happens to be a good one. Well, why is it a good one? Well, because they can take that corn, there's so much of it out there, and that harvest time, they can make corn syrup from it. And it's easily transportable in that form. In fact, it's taken in place in some pretty large tanker cars huge tanks of cars. You know the ones that pass you when you're stopped at the railroad tracks waiting for the for the signal to clear? Those big tanker cars? Well, those big tanker cars oftentimes are just filled with uh, corn syrup, and their destination is to the ver ver various pharmaceutical houses throughout the country uh, so that vitamin C can be extracted from it. This is the source, folks. It's corn. 99% of the time. Now, if that's the case, the next statements I make have to be taken for their scientific significance, which is, in the days of Linus Pauling, the source of, uh, of your vitamin C could have been from any corn product without a problem. It was as effective as any other source of vitamin C, and probably then some. But in the mid-90s, that all changed. And in the mid-90s, a great company called Monsanto finally started tinkering with, started playing with, started to tamper and mess around with vitamin C. And they genetically modified it, uh, they say, to make it uh, uh, less uh, prone to uh, insect attack and a whole host of other reasons. But nonetheless, they did, and they did it so good that within a very short period of time, all sources of corn, no matter where they're found in this country, all sources of corn are absolutely genetically modified. Now, you can't get around it. It's not like, oh, this patch over here, this organic, hey, by the way, the word organic corn may mean that it was grown without pesticides. It may mean that uh, certainly uh, fertilizer practices uh, utilized in the in the growth of that corn uh, are following a natural rather than chemical means, and that's and they are allowed to call it organic, but it cannot change the fact that that corn is uh, that uh, is going to be harvested is genetically modified corn. And here's the point, and everybody's going to get mad at me now, and then the throne may start lighting up. 
is that uh, in the case of the biology of, of antioxidants, it is a biological dud. Once you start messing with it, messing with the nucleus uh, of, of this substance, as has been done by Monsanto to do the genetic modification, then although it's the same molecule, it's the same molecular weight, it's the same everything. Uh, when compared to the corn it was originally come, it was originally derived from, that wasn't genetically modified. Except there's no biological bang for the buck. That the antioxidant that you're taking, antioxidant properties that you're taking that substance for, aren't going to be there for you uh, because it has been disturbed with, it has been messed with, it has been played around with, and, uh, and from that point on, it just can't give you the confidence of producing the antioxidant component you're searching for. So these terms of antioxidant and oxidant are powerful, and what you use in your daily supplements in order to pull off what you, what you uh, actually have learned so well that it needs to be done may be unable to be accomplished by your choice. So we're going to take a little break after that one. I'm going to have to go take a quick shower. I'll be back in a minute. And uh, uh, any, any comments? Uh, i got more to talk about with the strength of vitamin C. Uh, we're going to be talking about its second property, its water-soluble component, uh, which is absolutely another item that needs to be discussed when talking about vitamin C. The vitamin C issue continues when we return. Be back in a moment. to the doctor lately was the big top of your complaint list? Even if your doctor asks you what you eat, the recommended five servings of fruits and vegetables a day is a dream in your busy schedule. What if you learned of a product five years in the formulation that delivers five servings of fruits and minerals in just one ounce? That's right, it's through the spirit. The blessings of fruit of the spirit are now formulated into a delicious whole fruit puree product rich in antioxidants and minerals. Your health is more than just a test result. It's a balance of physical, spiritual, and emotional factors. You work regularly to strengthen your faith, but through the spirit, help cover your nutritional needs in a convenient and cost-effective ounce a day. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Fruit the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. Fruit of the Spirit, five servings of fruits and minerals with no added sugar. That's 1-800-442-3793 for your good health. Call them now, 1-800-442-3793. This is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, cutting edge allergy correction, and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, MD, is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Good morning and uh, welcome back to An Impact on Your Health here on this Monday version of the show. We are here today, we're talking about, about vitamin C. By the way, you can call up and uh, make your comments about vitamin C. It doesn't have to be about it, but uh, if, uh, as I'm speaking, you've you got a couple of questions or you, or you want to make some comments concerning it, 412-825-6262 is that number. That's 412-825-6262. More on the vitamin C issue. It's anti two major properties. One is an antioxidant, one is an antimicrobial, and in particular, 
antiviral, not antibacterial. So, with that in mind, talking about the source, you need to be looking, I say, for non-corn-derived sources. There are about four or five companies that I know of, and only four or five companies, that have taken their knowledge of this topic and said, we're not going to be using corn in the formation of the product that we put out, that we understand the biological activity of, of those corn derived products is more than likely a dud. And so consequently, in our formulation, we're going to use a non-corn derived source. It easily states it on the label. You need to be reading labels. When the label says nothing about the source, you can assume, and you would be assuming correctly, that that source is a corn-derived source. That's why they're not mentioning it. But in those four or five companies that actually make a non-corn-derived product, they proudly mention that the, the sources that I find that they come from, talking about the, these uh, other additional vitamin C sources, cassava root is a, is a, um, a well-utilized source. Uh, Beet-derived is another common utilized source. There are others. But the label will clearly state it as such. Hey, we got a knock on the door. Come on to the store. Hello, and welcome aboard. Hello there. Good morning, Dr. Courtney. Hi. Hey, you're talking my language. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, I am, huh? <laughs> What's that just for us? I know. Hey, how you doing? I haven't talked to you in a while. This is Faith, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody knows Faith. What's on your mind, Faith? Well, a number of things. Um, I'm listening to you. And huh. so, indeed... Um, well, one on the last thing that you just said, you do realize, don't you, that sugar beets are now being genetically modified, so you really have to watch your source of sugar beets. Well, you you are going to have to. I didn't realize they started, but um, there are a certain number of foods that they that were so safe because the industry, namely Monsanto, I guess is the word, the industry here, uh, wasn't hadn't even had it on the drawing board. You mean they're on the drawing board now? Well, more more than on the drawing board about a year and a half ago. Uh, Kellogg's got on that bandwagon. I, I don't even remember why. Uh, just that they were looking for a uh, another sugar source because a number of people were starting to pump that on to the corn the corn derived source. Uh -huh. And uh, so then they started a little campaign. Of course, it didn't take anything from Montana to pick up on it. And I'll, I'll look into it again, Miss. Look into it. By the way, uh, then check this cassava root, which I'm told is like a potato source. Yeah, it's sort of like a yucca. Okay, so um, is that left unscathed or untouched? Boy, if it if it has been touched, pass that one on to me too, Faith. I'd really be interested in knowing that. Yeah, sure. Uh, at the moment, cassava is okay, and um, and I'll look into that too because uh, cause it caused cassava cassava is becoming a more widely used source and more known. So of course, you know, as soon as that starts happening, uh, the dollar signs in uh, in months they those eyes definitely uh, start turning green. Um, I got a, a couple of interesting. I heard you talking about having John Michael on. Oh yeah, he's going to be on Wednesday. You're the one that actually brought him to us for the first time. Yeah, he's uh, and 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 aren't you glad? Isn't he just uh, first of all, he's just a delightful person. Oh, what a story too! That Air Force thing. Uh, that, I'm, I t said, John, you got to tell that story. People need to know about it. What? And and uh, he's. He's about ready to go big. I'm giving you a little preview. He's, he's, he's launching a, a connection to take his product countrywide. Yeah, he's been uh, looking at that for a while. And ah. he has a, um, well, you do realize, too, that he was a, an Olympic trainer. That's right. I remember him saying that. Yeah. Absolutely, sure. And he still does that, personal fitness. So when you have him on, you may want to. He wants to talk about his personal, personal fitness connection. He's quite proud of it. Uh -huh. And he asked me specifically, would it be all right if I mentioned it? I said, I would be offended if you did. So he'll talk about it. I would love to have him as a personal trainer. I mean, if you, if, if you don't know him, for all of your listeners, you've never met him at one of our events. Uh, he is, I don't think this man has, he is lean and mean. I mean, he's very pleased person, <laughs> but body-wise, there's not an ounce of fat on this man. He's an extra more, uh, sure. Yes. Well, hey, Doc, I got something for you, a couple of interesting things. Um, we kicked up our Third Street Gallery, so we're going to do an event at the Third Street Gallery on the first Friday of every month 
and we'll couple it with jazz as we did before. Oh, it's so Friday I'll, now, so people don't have to worry about. Right? Oh, then you pick a great out. night. Sure, you can stay out late and really, really hoof it. You can hoof it. That, yes, that's right. Right. So we're going to start that up on August sixth, and uh, it will be interesting. I've I've got this really portable sauna, and I'm going to uh, let people sit, try it out while they're there. While they're dancing. What? What's that? They're going to let you let them try it out there. Yes, I'm going to let them try it out there. They don't. They can just sit in it to uh, get a sense. I've never seen anything heat up this fast. Uh, Christina Northrup, I'm sure you've heard of her, uh -huh. the women's doc, uh, saw it and owns four other uh, saunas and immediately jumped on this one and just saw tons of people. But I I'm I'm really into this. I've been using it. Um, I haven't talked to you for a while because I got injured. I had a hairline crack in my ankle and really ripped some ligaments and everything. Oh. I've been using this. And I was I really got it because of the pain and it's for arthritis. It's medically um, the FDA has this as a medically uh, as a medical use tool. So for arthritis or muscle pains, I was using it to heal. But the side effects are heavy duty detoxification, weight loss, and cellulite loss of 60 to 70 percent. So I'm like, okay, I don't think I can go wrong there. <laughs> hey, good. Well then, um, when they're getting ready to come see you on the it's the first weekend, uh, uh, first Friday in August, is that right? Yes. Okay. So the new the new mantra as they're leaving the house is, don't forget the towel and the bathing suit. Is that right? Is we can actually sit in this fully clothed. And I, what I'd like people to do is to feel how fast it, it heats up. If they want to do a full treatment, I can set that up for them. Ah, yeah, all right. Like them, because I had people sitting in it the other day, and and everybody who even owned, they already owned infrared saunas. And they were like, they were amazed. They're like, this is amazing. All right. Um, hey, thanks for passing that on. Okay. That's, that's, I, uh, go ahead. Maybe. I wanted to break something to do, okay? Uh -huh. uh, I have formulated a theory, and I thought you might be very interested. Um, you, I, I, you know how much into organic I am? Oh, me too, because <laughs> of it, yeah. Okay, and biodiversity. Uh -huh. Biodiversity of plants so that, as we know, the potato famine, it, the reason that that happened, because there was no biodiversity of crops. There was one crop, one type of potato, one variety. And when the famine hit, that was it. It wiped everything. I mean, when the um, disease hit the potato, the blight, it wiped every potato out. Had they had biodiversity and had 10, 15, 20 different types of potatoes and varieties of potatoes growing in their country, maybe they had a lot of two or three, but that it still had a food source left. And that's the biggest uh, problem with having a monoculture where we clear all our land and grow all corn or all soy and or, you know, all um, uh, beets or just whatever it is, you end up depleting the soil and you end up with really awful uh, the dust bowl. That's how you create a dust bowl. So um, that's why organic small buying local from small farms is so good because not they totally avoid that. There's no monoculture. They include, they let weeds grow, they, you know, use those as part of it, they beneficially treat the soil. Anyways, I so biodiversity is key. And, and I think you and I talked about this on your show a couple of years ago. There used to be 3,700 uh, varieties of tomatoes. There used to be something like uh, 5,000 varieties of apples. Well, there's about the largest place in the country, I mean, in the world, for a biodiversity of apples, uh, say, I think there's like 2,200 species, and you can find a largest portion of them in Kyrgyzstan. And then I started looking farther, and I found out that like watermelon... Afghanistan kind of thing? Yes, near there. Uh-huh. Watermelons, yes, so you're following me here. Uh -huh. Watermelons, peaches, and another uh, food, which I'm blanking on, you... Uh, that the ground zero for there and for the most biodiversity is in Uzbekistan. And I'm, I'm just sort of like reading this in a couple of different books and following some uh, uh, products from uh, beginning to end from a uh, from, uh, growing source of uh, being grown to marketplace. And all of a sudden I happen to be watching the evening news and I'm, I'm seeing this map across the street and the war on Afghanistan, and then all of a sudden it hits me. 
here uh-huh. they are bringing the war to <laughs> the place of ground zero for biodiversity now now we all know how much big business is behind the war and take a look at I'm like going oh my gosh you, oh, yeah, wait you till, really dig. I bet you Monsanto, Cargill, all of Oh, yeah, well, you just wait until, because they found mineral, some sort of mineral thing there. Uh, so they'll, they'll plow over those apple trees oh, yeah. to, get, to get to the mineral. <laughs> that biodiversity is not long-lived. Uh, once uh, Monsanto gets a hold of it, and whoever, whoever the mineral companies are are going to mine that. But uh, interesting, it, uh, it clicked with me right away that uh, right now where, where the wars are going on, <laughs> You're telling me this is like the cradle of, uh, of and, and the birth of, of biodiversity, yet uh, because, because no man has ever gone there, okay? Right. Well, the few places left well, haven't disturbed it. Well, get ready. The, 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 the disturbing is just about ready to begin. Thank you, Faith, for giving <laughs> us a call. Okay, well, it was good to talk with you. Yeah, good to talk with you. Don't forget, that. what's the date of your deal there? August 5th? August 6th, uh, August 6th at 630. So, I, just listen to me, folks. Don't, don't forget. Bring a towel. Just bring a towel. <laughs> bring a towel. That's right. Bring a towel. Okay. <laughs> Take care, Dr. Courtney. Yeah, thank you. It's been a long time since we heard from Faith. It really was nice to hear from her. And, of course, she always has valid and pertinent information, this issue of the um, of the beats. Uh, of course, you need, uh, you should find that as you're purchasing vitamin C and you're looking for those products. Um uh, that are non-corn derived. Uh, the people, the, the, the sources, I think I'm pretty much, uh, I know each of these sources, these four or five sources, would be only utilizing those sources because they were not genetically modified. And so what you're going to be finding is, I think, safely to say, that uh, they'll, they'll switch it around. They'll move to the, to the source that is not been messed with with respect to uh, uh, genetic modification. All right. Now, uh, we've got a number of other things to talk about vitamin C. We're really coming down to the home stretch. Anything, anybody out there want to call and make a comment? Any of my colleagues uh, angry with me? I know it happened before when I got into this uh, non-corn-derived kick. You just have to be able to discuss it. Faith knows all too well what I'm saying is absolutely correct about these non-corn-derived sources. You've got to be label readers, and when the, in the absence of mention, on a vitamin on a vitamin C bottle, um, you absolutely need to be able uh, to assume that it's corn derived, and therefore it's a, it's a biological dud, and you can't accomplish the antioxidant goals that you're looking for that are so easily accomplishable. Now the other component, which we'll just briefly get into, just to tell you what it is. And then the next time we're together, maybe on uh, Monday, before, Monday before John or Friday, when we have a little more time, we're going to be talking about the second issue with respect to vitamin C, and that's uh, with respect to the fact that it is a water-soluble uh, item instead of fat-soluble, and that brings with it a whole host of other issues that we need to talk about. So you don't want to miss that. Now we got a knock on the door. Come on to the store. Hello and welcome aboard. Mr. Courtney, I just wanted to make a comment. Uh, by law, if it says 100% organic, GMOs are not permitted in the food. 100%. But that's the law as far as I understand it right now. Uh, you got, uh, I'm going to tell you what, I think that that may be an error, and I'll, say, I'll tell you why. Um, I get, uh, I look for uh, popcorn, organic popcorn, okay? Right. And uh, that organic popcorn is coming from the same corn source as everybody else. Uh, the only reason that, that they're allowed to say that it's organic is how it's grown. They're, the fact that it's genetically modified, this is not coming from Europe. This is coming from the United States. And um, I think it may, you may be in error. Genetically modified is what it is now. It's all, all corn that you can harvest in this country is all genetically modified. It's all genetically modified. It's not like over here. Oh, we get a special patch. This little patch right here, this isn't genetically modified, and it's grown without pesticides. So this is your organic corn field, and it's completely healthy all the way around. There is no such thing in this country. All the corn is genetically modified. It just can be grown with with or without certain products that enable it to have the uh, stamp on it that it is uh, that it is uh, organic. 
Now, in Europe, that's another matter altogether. But if you're talking about this country, no, I think you're wrong. Well, okay, that's, uh, then the Whole Foods is very disingenuous. It says right on its label cans, U.S. law does not allow the use of genetically engineered ingredients or seeds in products labeled as organic. Um, well, I think maybe the way around that is if it's labeled 100% organic, perhaps. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I know that there must be a loop, a, a, a loophole for them to be able to try to, uh, to hoodwink the public. But when it comes to the corn, because it is now 100%, you cannot find any corn not genetically modified. So consequently, when you buy organic corn products, which I do, um, I'm, not, I'm not getting the biological uh, uh, bang for the buck from the antioxidant viewpoint, but I, I am getting the lack of the pesticides, which is the reason I buy it for. Thank you very much. And the labels are... Uh, They're deceptive. They're deceptive. Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right, you heard that bang, bang, bang. No bongos. It's just time out of here. We'll be back on Wednesday with John Michael talking about all those great things about Love Street. Until then, this is Dr. Dennis Courtney saying so long for and impact on your health.